Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today, I'm going to be showing you how to create a world space UV shader uh, within Unity. Uh, it's going to be a ridiculously simple tutorial. I think it's about 10 nodes. Um, but anyway, without further ado, let's let's get straight into it. So go ahead and uh, create a folder called shaders. And inside this folder, we're going to create a new shader, universal render pipeline and lit shader graph. Or, or don't, thanks Unity, shader, lit, lit shader grab. I'm gonna call this world space UV. Okay, so um, once you've created the UV uh, shader graph, we need to create a couple of parameters, a couple, a couple of properties we call them. Um, first thing is going to be a texture 2D. This is, we're just literally going to call this texture. And then we're also going to have another texture 2D called normal map. We're going to have a flow called tiling, float called blend, and a float, whoops, and a float called normal drink, like so. Put that one under there. And just for ease of use, this is going to be a slider between zero and five. To change it over to a slider, you click onto the property and go to mode. And then you have an enumerator, an integer, or a slider. Plain and simple. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is you want to drag both of these textures in. Okay? And then we also are going to need uh, the position node. Like so. Obviously, you just right-click, create node, and you create a position. And we also want to create a normal vector. So we want the normal vector to be in world space and the position to be in the absolute world space. This is important because this simply gets it, gets the coordinate of our object in the world and uses that for the UV. So we go ahead and uh, add a thing called a triplanar node. Now you could go ahead and make a, your own triplanar node, but um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, and you just want two of these because you want one for the normal map and you change the type of this one to normal and you want one for just the texture. Drag texture to texture and normal map to texture. And go ahead and real, like realign this a little bit so it's a bit neater. And then this goes, so this absolute world position goes to this absolute world position, world space normal to world space normal, vice versa. Then you also want to add tiling and blend in. And these will need to go, so tile will go to tile, blend will go to blend, tile will go to tile, and blend will go to blend. Then, um, coming out of this normal map node, you want a normal strength. And this is going to go into the in value because this is our normal going in. And then all you do is drag normal strength as a parameter there. And then we can pass this into the normal tangent space. And we can also pass this into the base color. And this is literally it. If I go ahead and save this asset, a uh, little trick I've learned is if you right click on a shader, create a material from that shader, it creates a material with that shader. Um, and here we go. So I downloaded a grass um, texture. So I'm going to create a material called grass. In the shader, I'm going to drop down to shader graphs and drag in world space UV. Then I'm going to apply the color. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention is you should set the tiling to one and the blend should always stay at 1000. Um, it's a weird number, I know, but it's just the one that works the best. So we're going to go ahead and reset this. So now, as you can see, we have this going around the ball, the grass color. Uh, drag the normal map in, and you can adjust. As you can see, the normal map is working. And then we drag this on. And as you can see, it's, a perfect, it's perfectly tiled. Now, where this comes in handy is if, for example... I place the cube in and apply this. If I go top down and focus on this cube, see how it just lines up? The texture is always going to be in the same space. Now this is useful as well. 
because if we used it on something like our prototype ground that we made and add the gray texture drag this in we have a cube with this material as well these grids are always going to match up it uh, and they'll always be a meter by a meter no matter what the uv looks like on an object because it doesn't actually use the 2d uvs it references the position to create those 2d uvs um and it just means that you'll never have those weird um grid overlaps that always and always line up i wonder if there's anything else i could use to demonstrate it even on even on let's say a cylinder they still line up right so because that's really wide there it goes wide around the corner it's all white you can rotate it. Obviously, some rotations will cause weird issues. Nothing you can do to get around that. But even at the front, you see, it lines up perfectly. Always. Um, and yeah, it's just useful because things don't need to be tiled. Now, one thing I've noticed with this is the gloss. So we can go ahead and uh, adjust the gloss a little bit. So we create a flow called gloss and once again set this to a slider for ease of use. We can go ahead and drag this under smoothness, like so, quick save. Now we can control the smoothness in a slider. And uh, there we are. If I adjust the normal strength, you can see it goes up and down. Um, one thing that we will eventually add to this um, the displacement map, which, um, yeah, I want to add a displacement map to it, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. So once I figured it out, I'll make a whole separate tutorial on how to add it, uh, a shader like this with UV displacement. So the, the grass will actually be bobbing up and down and et cetera, et cetera. But, um, thank you for watching guys. I hope it was useful. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.